Boston Harbor. Um, our next our next presenter uh, is Richie Reddy, who is American, who knows a lot about tea. Um, so I'm very excited, I'm very excited for this presentation. It's got drugs, it's got uh, countries in the world and stuff in it. Like the slides look very cool, and uh, Richie is going to present about it now. So a huge round of applause for Richie, your final presenter tonight. Thank you, everyone. Hello, my name is Rishi Reddy, and I'm here today to talk about tea. Tea is the second most drunk beverage in the world, but unfortunately most of the tea drunk is very bad. So I'm going to try and convince you why you should start drinking high-end loose-leaf teas. There are six different teas, and they're all derived from the same plant, Camilla sinensis. White tea is named white for the white crystal buds that grow on the immature buds picked in the spring in Fujian, China. It brews a pale yellow and has a sweet, delicate flavor. Yellow tea is the rarest tea in the world. I've only had it twice in my life. It's incredibly manually laborious to pick. It's the, it brews a bright yellow flavor, and it's without a doubt the sweetest of all teas. Green tea has earthy vegetal tones, and if you take a specific type of green tea and let the natural bacteria on the tea ferment and age over a set period of time, you'll be left with pu'er tea, a black brick-like tea that has an almost fishy smell and a unique, completely dark taste. Oolong tea is the most diverse of all teas, with flavors ranging from floral to woody, and it's also the only high-grade tea that you can buy at a fairly affordable price. Uh, black tea is, uh, has a certain spicy muskiness to it, with citrus undertones, and uh, a good black tea will brew uh, a golden brown hue and will not be black at all. Now here's what's really remarkable about tea. There's two psychoactive components in tea that can cross the blood-brain barrier. One is caffeine, which stimulates you, keeps you alert, and keeps you awake. The other is theanine, which relaxes you, relieves stress, has shown improved cognition in the short term, and will improve your memory. The synergistic effect of caffeine and theanine working on your brain is what produces the pleasant buzz of being on tea that's both alert and relaxed. This buzz is what makes tea so conducive to thinking, reading, and fostering intellectual exchange between friends, and is what ultimately separates tea from all other refined beverages. When thinking about the other drinks, you're going to have coffee, which if you drink too much of, you'll be strung out, irritable, and in a rather bad mood. Wine, which is typically revered as the refined drink, but will render you overly emotional, incapable of expressing cogent thought, and if you drink too much of it, you'll end up like this girl. So what at all is refined about this? Tea, on the other hand, will leave you smart, healthy, and able to talk. Tea has a number of health benefits, including better immunity, reduced blood pressure, reduced cholesterol, but the most important of which is it's shown to decrease cognitive decline with aging. This is the scariest part of getting older for me, and tea will help retard this process, and it's part of the reason why I drink it every day. If you're looking to brew the perfect cup of tea, you should absolutely never use tap water because water quality is important. Each tea has its own specific brewing temperature, and if you use boiling water with white teas or green teas, you'll scorch them, cause them bitter, and they'll be undrinkable. Each tea has a specific amount of steep time, and you should always throw out your first brew because it'll be over-caffeinated and too strong. Now, bag tea is categorically bad, and you should never drink it. The best parts of tea are the stemmy prickly parts. Those have the most theanine and the most flavor, and those would prick through the bag, rendering it unable to use. So the tea that goes into bag tea is the absolute lowest quality. So not only does it have no taste, it does not produce the theanine buzz, and there's no need to drink it. Tea is grown all over the world, but the best teas are grown in India, where black tea grows natively, southern China, where every type of other tea grows natively, and though no tea grows natively in Japan, the Japanese ability to tinker with any good until they achieve consummate perfection produces <laughs> splendid green teas incredibly high in theanine. Herbal tea is not actually tea at all, as it does not have Camille senescence in it. But the idea linguistically that we use the word tea to describe beverages as distinct as a sedative root in valerian, a flower in chrysanthemum, or a yeast in bacteria colony in kombucha speaks to how diverse and wonderful the six actual teas are. If you're looking to buy tea in Phnom Penh like you all should be now, there's only one tea shop I know of that's any good. It's on the northwest corner of Mani Vong and Mao. It's run by a Chinese Khmer who spent 10 years studying tea in China, and he's probably the most knowledgeable tea master in the entire country. Now I'm briefly going to change gears and talk about cultural phenomenon. Brian Eno was one of the early pioneers of electronic music, and he posited an interesting question. When, why, when you design an airport, is so much thought given to the structure and layout of the building, but no thought given to the music that's played inside that everyone is forced to hear? 
So he went out and produced an ambient piece of music that was meant to be played in airports to alleviate a lot of the stress and anxiety associated with traveling. So I started thinking about the similar question in the context of tea. Why, when you go to a dinner party, is it a cultural faux pas to serve someone boxed wine or goon for the Australians, but it's perfectly acceptable to serve someone bag tea? Why, when you go to a wedding, will you be offered your choice between Merlot or Chardonnay, and the utmost care will be given to decide the floral design on the tables, the cake, and the dress the bride wears, but no thought will be given to the tea that's served after dinner. And I ultimately think it's because the learning curve for tea is really high, and there isn't necessarily a cultural awareness of how great tea is across the world. And I liken this to my personal experience with cheese. Growing up, I, I really didn't like cheese because I'd had Kraft Singles. It's a really crappy American processed cheese that's probably illegal in France. But one day in my teenage years, I was traveling on the English countryside and I had a bite of Stilton, a remarkable British blue cheese. And this memory is so poignant for me because in one part, it was my first taste of that pungent aroma of blue cheese coupled with the salty sharpness of a blue cheese. But even that was the simultaneous deconstruction of every composite vector in my mind that was telling me that cheese was bad. And I think that was a beautiful thing. And I want to help the world to see this is to have the same experience with tea. And thinking back to the laconic platitudes that are ingrained in our mind as children, one that sticks with me is that be the change you wish to see in the world. And that's why I'm here today. And that's why I'm hoping to open a tea house and see him reap later this year that you should all go to. And that's why after I graduate school, I'm going to devote my life to cultivating a public interest in tea similar to that which is shared by wine today. And I hope you guys all helped me. My contact information. Very right, cool. Oh yeah, here you go. If anybody asks a question, you get a bag of high-grade Fujian oolong tea. Uh, Water temperature is boiling, steep time is three minutes. Yeah. Uh, is the international tea lobby paying you? And if not, why not? Because you're brilliant. Uh, I actually don't think there is an international tea lobby. There are 20 buyers that buy all the Darjeeling tea in the world, and I don't think they're connected in any way. So no, I'm not going to Well, now's the time. Yeah? Uh, is there such thing as a tea overdose? Tea overdose? No, there's no... Okay, so... There's 700 different chemicals in tea, and I can't speak to every single one of them, but they've done studies exposing rats to uh, ludicrous amounts of theanine, like 50 times the amount you could possibly drink in a day, and that showed increased cognitive function and uh, no negative effects. What? I can't hear you. Oh, yeah, I actually met somebody the other day who claimed to be allergic to tea, so maybe he's allergic to... Oh, that guy over there. Okay, so, uh, so uh, maybe he's allergic, and like I could conjecture that perhaps you're allergic to theanine because theanine is only found in tea, uh, a South American plant, guayasa, and a, a weird mushroom. And so it's very possible if you're allergic to tea, you're allergic to theanine. How is the best uh, way to make to have the lip tea? Is it hot or cold water? Oh no, no, you have to use hot water. Yeah, yeah, so each, each tea has a different boiling temperature, the lowest of which is a Japanese tea that has like brews at 45 degrees, and the highest of which are oolong and black teas which brew at boiling. What was the best cup of tea you've ever had in your entire life? Uh, I'll tell a story about being American. Okay, so uh, I had just read Moby Dick, which is like the great American work of fiction, uh, and there's a passage in it in which I and many other readers fixed upon in which Ishmael, the protagonist, is pontificating upon how no one can understand the whale, the truly investigated whale, except on the profound and unbounded sea. And there I was in my small New York apartment wondering, like, what am I doing here in New York? The whale is way out there. So I drove to Plymouth, Massachusetts, which is the closest place to see a whale, and I had about two hours to kill. So I went to this tea house, and I didn't know much about tea. And what proved to be one of the most serendipitous moments of my life, this, this nice conservative blonde girl, served me this cup of white tea, and I, and I drank it. And at a point in time, I felt, I felt much better. Like, I didn't know what I would go out to see, what the Leviathan would look like in person, but I was more ready. And it turned out that that tea I drank has the second most theanine of any tea in the world. And that was the reason why. And now I drink that tea almost every single day. <laughs> Wes? Can you talk a little bit about the domestication of tea? Uh, as in ch turning it from a wild plant into... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so unfortunately I'm not as interested in agrarianism as I am in centralism, so I don't know a ton about agrarian techniques, but 
tea grows natively in northern India and southern China, and it's been domesticated in China for a very long time. Okay, so the reason Sri Lanka's got a big name in tea lore is because Sri Lanka would export black teas to countries that India had an embargo against. So very fundamentally Muslim countries like Iran, Syria, Iraq. And that's why Sri Lanka has like, gained this idea of being a big tea place. But the, tea in, the black tea in Sri Lanka is not as good as the tea in Darjeeling or Assam. But it's, it's still better than most black tea. I'm out of tea bags for everyone, so like, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so that's really crappy Vietnamese tea. It's like the absolute lowest grade of Vietnamese tea. It's probably picked by the Hmong people in northern Vietnam. Uh, but the only reason they serve it is because it's cheap. A big round of applause for all our presenters. So, Nerd Night happens every two weeks. Um, it's in a different place every two weeks. We make it tricky like that for you. I don't know where the next one's going to be. But if you want to find out, um, you should sign up for the Nerd Night uh, mailing list. Either just give me your email address, I'll sign you up. You get an average of half an email a week if you average it out. Um, we don't spam you or anything like that. Um, also check us out on Facebook, Nerd Night Phnom Penh. Uh, we'll be posting videos of tonight's presentation on Facebook so you can watch them again or like show your mom. Um, and then I want to thank our sponsor, The Flicks. Um, so Nerd Night is every other Monday, which means next Monday, you have some time on your hands. Uh, next Monday is Phnom Penh Doc Night on which the flicks shows daring documentaries. Uh, they're going to show Virginity Trade, The Girls of Phnom Penh, and the highly critical movie, The Trap of Saving Cambodia, all in one night. Um, and you need to make your reser use reservations only. Um, go to the flicks cambodiacom for uh, Phnom Penh Doc Night uh, reservations next week. Um, again, anything I'm leaving out, thank you so much for all our speakers. Thank you so much for you guys for coming. Um, Grab some more beers, let's hang out. Um, yeah, have a good night. Oh, t-shirts, t-shirts, five bucks, what's up? <laughs> All right, thanks everyone.